It's time now to meet our first speaker of the evening. Mary Lou Four is a Parisian illustrator and artist currently based in London, although tonight she's actually dialing in from Spain. Her colorful and empowering works depict and celebrate the female form and have garnered fans around the world, as well as commissions from the likes of Lyft and Spotify. Tonight, she's gonna to be talking about how you keep focus as a freelancer and make sure your career keeps moving in the desired direction. She'll also, of course, uh, be showing some of her wonderful work as well. Um, so Mary Lou, if you wouldn't mind turning your uh, audio and video on so we can say hello. Hiya. Hi there, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, good, how are you? Yeah, very well, thanks. Um, lovely shirt, I've, I mentioned it before before we started <laughs> as well, but uh, yeah, great shirt. I think the best thanks. shirt we've had on Nice to for a while. <laughs> it's the holiday vibes, thank you. <laughs> exactly. Are you, you're dialing in from Spain, is that right? Yeah, 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 I went to see some family there, so. Okay, amazing. <laughs> great, great. Well, listen, I won't take up any more time. So um, over to you, really, to present your screen. And um, yeah, just a reminder to everyone else, um, if you have any questions for Marilou, put them in the chat and I'll try and uh, try my best to ask them afterwards. Awesome. Perfect. Well, hi, everyone. And thanks for the intro, Matt. Uh, thanks also, Nice to Tuesday, for inviting me to be, uh, to be here tonight and to talk a little bit about my work. Um, so as a little brief intro about myself. Um, I am a freelance uh, artist and illustrator living in London. My style is very bold and bright and colorful and I uh, will always include, um, I like to portray the female body, um, women and any characters that are feeling good about themselves and feeling confident and empowered. But what I wanted to talk about this evening is um, an issue that I've had to face for the last six, seven years as a freelance uh, illustrator which has been, how do I keep control over the work that I do? How do I keep control over, um, over the type of projects that I'm creating? And how do I make, make sure that I'm going in the right direction? And if not, how do I steer myself in the right direction? Because there's been a few times now um, in the last six years where although things were going well and you know, I was working on some projects and, and uh, I was pretty happy with overall the direction, there were some things that were making me a little bit um, frustrated and I felt like I wasn't doing exactly the type of work that I wanted to do or I wanted to try something else or I didn't want my work to be described in that certain way and I've had to really take action and react to it to make sure that I could steer myself in the right direction. Um, so the first thing that happened was when uh, at the very beginning of going freelance because it was a start and it's you know I wasn't very picky with the, the projects that I was getting because I needed to work on as many as, as possible to start with. Um, I was feeling a little bit frustrated because I wasn't really working on the type of projects that I wanted with clients. The projects felt a little bit bland, they felt a bit soulless in the sense that I wasn't tackling any issues that I cared about. I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was using my work to do something positive or impactful, which, which was something that I really wanted to try and achieve. Um, so because I wasn't getting that with my client projects, I figured if I want to, if I want to try and, and have my work perceived that way, I need to, I need to do it with my spare time. So I worked on a lot of pro bono projects. I, you know, contributed uh, to any kind of, any, any association, any charities, any nonprofit that were in need of a visual, I would always try and, and, um, and get mine in there and I was always also trying to describe my work in including the fact that I wanted to have a positive message at the core of my core of my illustration and that was something that I really cared about and so by really putting it out there pushing it on my social media and website and showing all these projects that had quite a core message that was important and that was talking about the issues that I cared about it took a bit of time but eventually it did end up having an impact on the kind of kind of projects that I was getting as a, as a freelancer with my clients. And it then led me to work on loads of, um, loads of projects that I felt really strongly about. And the thing that I like about that as well is not, not only do I care about these issues and I, I really do wanna you know, um, use my work to, to have, a, have a voice uh, in the matter, but also I feel like it helps me to create the more striking work because I feel way more inspired and because it's way more motivating to, to use your artwork to try and do something positive, it leads me to do work that I'm actually the most proud of. So it's also quite an important thing um, visually because it has an impact on my style and on what I create. Um, so yeah, it led me to work on, on, on some really exciting projects. This one was for end youth homelessness and, and it was a really interesting one. Um, and then something as well that happened quite quickly um, is that I 
my work wasn't exactly seen the way I wanted it to be seen because it's very colorful and it's very playful and it's very character based. And at the beginning, when I was starting up, my style was a bit safer. It had, you know, my characters weren't as confident. They weren't as naked and they, uh, they didn't really portray the same sort of attitude. And it led me to have the comment from clients that my work was cute or childish or useful. And I didn't want that at all. I wanted my work to be targeting an older audience. I wanted it to be more like my, my age and I wanted my work to be more mature and cheekier and a bit more fun. Um, and so to do that, I, I was changing my website and I literally removed half of the projects in there and I replaced them with personal work. And all of that personal work were women, loads of nudity, loads of boobs, loads of bums. And just to show, okay, this is what I do. And no, it's not for children. Um, and, you know, I think that that worked nicely because what I really wanted to do, it wasn't so much about the, the nudity, but I just really wanted my characters to be, I wanted them to feel more empowered, more confident, more, more of an, have more of an attitude to that. And I felt like if I went down the, you know, children's illustration, I might not be able to do that in that, in that sense. Um, I did have to dial it down a little bit because, because I replaced so much of my work on my web website with nudity and mature work, I was starting to get loads of projects that were more about sex toys and porn and condom designs. And that was really fun as well, but <laughs> it's also not exactly the route that I wanted to take. So I had to sort of dial it down and find the right balance between having a colorful style, but it not being childish and having a central style, but not it being necessarily sexual. Um, and uh, again, that took a little bit of time, but finding that balance has really led me to then have my work seen the way I wanted it to be seen and get the projects that I wanted to work on. And then lastly, one thing that happened, which is sort of an ongoing thing and it's still in, in progress, is um, I felt I wanted to sort of escape the digital world a little bit because over the last seven years, you know, 90% of my work has been digital because that's really what, you know, that was what was available on the market. That's what was needed. And I was getting these projects. And because I was just on a roll and taking them, I didn't really realize that for a while, but I was starting to feel a little bit frustrated because I was getting very, very much of the same projects. And I loved working on, on sticker sets and it was really fun. And I, I had some amazing projects with that. But at some point it just, I was just a stick, sticker lady. I just kept doing stickers. It was the only projects that I was getting approached for. And whilst it was fun, I felt like I wanted to do something completely different, actually. I wanted to take that small illustration and I wanted to burst it open, have it massively painted on a wall or have a window display or have it in 3D. And I felt like I was just restrained in that, in that screen and I wanted to break out of it. Um, so to do that, I started by painting a door, which is a couple of friends, uh, door in uh, East London and they asked me if I wanted to paint it and it was an important step because um, the last time I had painted anything was uni and it was pretty shit so I didn't feel extremely confident uh, portraying myself as someone who could paint but I also knew that I did want to do that and I had to just force myself into doing it um, so I painted that door and you know it got some it got some, some nice um, some, some nice reaction and, and because it was a busy street, uh, I had a few people who were posting about it and it just gave me that confidence to, to think, okay, so maybe this is something that I could explore and this opens up a door uh, to a completely different uh, way of using my illustration, which was really exciting and what I was um, looking for. Um, so then after that, once I had that first one, I just, anytime that I had an occasion to pitch for a mural, I did, anytime there was a show, any occasion really where I could say, oh, sh can, we, can we actually paint something or could we make something big? Um, I jumped on it because then uh, it, led, it led people to see my work in that way and then start hiring me for those kind of projects. Because you know, while I still do loads of digital work and I really enjoy it, I was starting to get bored. And I feel like this is such a, it's such an exciting industry and it's such an exciting job and I love what I do. And if I start getting bored, it feels, it feels really wrong. So um, that's why I really wanted to try something a bit different. And that sort of led to me also um, working on more, you know, painting on, on paper and on canvases during lockdown, painting on anything that was in the house because I was so bored. Um, and again, it's just, it's a nice, it's just a nice um, different way of using my artwork and, uh, and it's just, uh, it's just, it just opens up a new, a new world for new opportunities of, uh, of using my art. 
And on a last note, it's also something that I really wanted to explore, which was, um, you know, using, uh, translating my work from 2D to 3D, which was something that I had never done and I didn't know how to do. So I had to collaborate with someone, but I didn't really, I knew I wanted to do it, but I was sort of expected someone to just email me and propose to do a figuring together when actually that didn't happen. So I kind of had to create my own opportunity for this and, and, uh, and, uh, and just go for it and see if it would work. Um, and so that led me to do quite a few um, uh, collaborations with Nicola Strada, who's this amazing 3D designer in Italy. Um, and then I ended up doing a batch of figurines that were produced in, in the UK. And, and it's just, you know, it's just having the sort of confidence of thinking, well, you know, I, I've never done it before and I don't think someone's gonna hire me if they haven't seen it because we're in such a visual industry where it's hard to imagine something being translated into something completely different and having something in volume uh, looks very different than obviously flat on a, on a screen. So it's just, you know, doing collaborations and, and, and just going for it and seeing if it works. Um, it, it is down a lot to personal work. And, you know, I know that's the main advice that every artist and creative give is to work on personal work to, to make sure you're going in the right direction with, with the projects that you get. But it does really help. And um, because when it's your personal work, you have no feedback, you have no clients, and, you, you know, you're just completely free to do anything that you want. And it's bound to be... A good reason to make your best work so um so yeah so that was sort of the 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 conclusion i guess is to say that if you're you know if you're working and you're not doing ex exactly what you want that's completely fine you should really just keep the 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 lead on because at the end of the day it's it's your work and it's your um you know it's your passion and, and it's your art and and you know you should just make sure that you're trying to do something that you're proud of and that you're happy to do and if you're not you can just steer yourself in the right direction and yeah that's all <laughs> thanks so much marily that was amazing um such good advice in there for any kind of freelance creative i think um one thing that really struck me from from what you were you're saying there is that i guess like as an illustrator particularly you really have to be your own kind of promoter and yeah. someone submitted a question before we before we came on today. And, and the question is like, how did you get the courage to start promoting yourself? Because um, yeah. it does take a bit of courage, doesn't it? Yeah, it's very hard. And I think as most artists, I think most of us are introverts. So it's quite, uh, it's kind of challenging to then be like, hey, like, look at what I do. And, and um, but I think, you know, I think you just need to think that you're just promoting it, you're putting it out there and the people who are going to react most likely are going to be, it's going to be a positive reaction and they're going to be encouraging. So don't be too scared about what people are going to say and, and just as long as you're promoting something that you like, there's no harm in, in doing that. Yeah, fair enough. I think that also answers a question that Mateo's had. Um, I hope I've said your name right, sorry. But it was, yeah, do you have any tips on creating online community around you and your work? Which I guess is the same thing. It's kind of like, yeah. you know, get it out there. and hope. I think get it, yeah, I think, I mean, I did, I, I worked on a lot of personal work and I, you know, I really promoted that. And I had a lot of content because I kept creating series and so I could share them a lot. Uh, and that really helped build a bit of a, a bit of a uh, community and then, other, other than that, I think just just share your work and and um, and be happy with what you're sharing. But there's not much else you, to say on that because it's, yeah, there's no kind of secret, is there? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, there's no secret. <laughs> Natalie Natalie had a really good question, which is how did you go about pricing your work, especially kind of as you started out? Um, how did you know how to value your output? Yeah, that's really hard, and I was not taught that at all by my school, um, and. I had a lot of help from the AOI. Like, I have really, like I sent a desperate email, like <laughs> just please help me. <laughs> and uh, I, had the, I had someone really helping me out on that. And then I think you sort of have to, I like to ask a lot of questions and I ask prices to other artists. I know it's not really necessarily the, <laughs> so the maybe it's because I'm French, it's my rude, rude side, but I just think, you know, and I like to reply to the people, like if you don't know where people, how people are pricing themselves, it's gonna be very hard to put yourself in the market. So reach out to other artists and ask them. Maybe a lot will be uncomfortable answering, but I think quite a few will help. And I had some artists really helping me out on that as well. So. That's great. Yeah, well, good, good. There's kind of a bit of community around that. Um, yeah. One final question from Olivia. She asks, um, have you got any tips for balancing client work with personal projects? I guess you talked a little bit about how important personal projects have been for you. Yeah. But how do you make that balance, I guess? Well, I mean, to start with, I, um, I was just working, I had, I was working a lot on personal projects 
during my weekends and like evenings because I knew I had to focus on client projects and I had to get the money in. And, and it's really hard at the start because, you know, you have to constantly be working to, to make a living. But um, now I would say, I think if you view the personal work as just, I see it as something completely different. Like I'm having, I'm having a lot of fun when I'm doing my personal series. I don't even see it as work. So I'll have my work day where it's I've done all my client work and at six in the evening, I'll just start working on my own stuff. And, you know, I, I would say that's, I mean, that's how I, I do it, but I know it means working a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately that's maybe, maybe not the healthiest advice, but <laughs> yeah. 